This is the Turf Zone Podcast, your central information and news hub, bringing together professionals from turf associations across multiple states to share things to help you in your business. Brought to you in partnership with our friends at the Alabama Turfgrass Association. Now, let's get in the zone. Welcome to the Turf Zone. In this episode, we feature an article titled Write on Applicators, a Tool for Success by Brian Unruh, PhD, professor at the University of Florida. The use of write on applicators in the landscape is common in the northern and transition zones of the United States. However, it has only been in recent years that these machines have made their way south. Right on applicator use on warm season landscapes has been steadily rising over the past few years. In visiting with lawn care operators, the consensus is that the increasing difficulty in finding labor is prompting the shift towards the right on applicators. In a leading industry survey, 56% of survey respondents listed labor as a major concern. The challenge is due to the aging workforce and the difficulty in attracting younger workers. A cursory review of Lawn and Landscape magazine reveals several articles aimed at attracting and retaining young employees. The use of write-on applicators is seen as a key move to keep younger workers satisfied. Write-on applicators also allow for increased productivity since one can spray and spread at the same time. Additionally, write-on applicators require less manual labor, putting an end to dragging hoses or pushing spreaders. The advantages of write-on applicators are cover larger areas more quickly, convenience, easy to make spot applications, consistency of applications throughout the day, less labor intensive, so retain skilled workers, higher profit potential. The disadvantages of write-on type applicators are initial cost, 4,600 plus, Hauling requirements, operating on slopes and in small areas, maintenance adjustments and costs, sprayer uniformity concerns, low volume applications only, small spray tanks, calibration is more complicated, and training slash learning curve. Types of write-on applicators. There are basically two types of write-on applicators, spreader only and spreader sprayer. The spreader-only applicators are useful for applying granular products such as fertilizer or fertilizer sparged with a pesticide. Examples include the Ferris Rover write-on spreader, the Spiker write-on spreader, and the Lesco HPS Chariot write-on spreader. Retail pricing for spreader-only models range from $4,600 to $6,775. The spreader-sprayer applicators allow for singular or simultaneous application of both dry and liquid products. There are two types of sprayer designs, boomless and boom type. The boomless sprayers employ a cluster of flood jet type nozzles that distribute the spray solution through a single nozzle operating at a given time. The boom sprayer, as the name implies, has three or four nozzles uniformly spaced along a rigid boom. Examples include the Permagreen, Ferris Venture, Z-Spray, and the Turfco T3100 Spreader and Sprayer. Retail pricing for the spreader sprayer systems range from $10,000 to $13,000. Calibrating right on pesticide sprayers and fertilizer spreaders. As with any fertilizer or pesticide application equipment, Calibration is critical for achieving effective pest control and providing uniform greening without yellow streaking from fertilizer misapplications. When combining two distribution methods, granular and liquid, the calibration can be quite challenging. Fortunately, Purdue University Extension has a fantastic publication on calibrating write-on pesticide sprayers and fertilizer spreaders available as a free download. Do write-on applicators work as well as conventional equipment? As noted, proper calibration is the first step in achieving success with any application equipment. 
The application of fertilizer using a write-on applicator does not differ too much from a standard push spreader. Assuming the machine is operated in the intended manner, one can achieve uniform results. Conversely, the spray delivery systems on write-on applicators can offer some unique challenges that differ from conventional landscape sprayers, namely the low volume applications and operating the equipment in small, tight areas. Historically, most lawn care spray volumes range from 1 to 3 gallons per 1,000 square feet, or 43 to 130 gallons per acre, delivered through industry standard spray guns such as the Lesco Chemlon spray gun or the JD9 high pressure spray gun. However, most write-on applicators are configured to deliver a quart per 1,000 square feet, which significantly reduces the coverage and may impact the efficacy of the plant protectant or liquid nutritionals. For a pesticide to work properly, the active ingredient must come into contact with the target organism and remain at a lethal concentration for a specific amount of time. There are many factors that influence effective pest control, regardless of whether weeds, diseases, or insects are the targets. Questions that should be answered prior to using a particular pesticide in a low-volume applicator include, 1. Is the targeted insect or disease soil-borne, or does it inhabit the foliage? 2. Does the targeted weed have attributes, e.g. waxy or pubescent leaves, that make control difficult? 3. Is the most effective pesticide for the targeted pest a contact or a systemic? Four, does the label recommend or require the use of adjuvants, i.e. spreaders, stickers, and drift reduction agents? And five, relative sensitivity of the turf grass to the pesticide being applied. Is there a margin of safety should treated areas get overlapping coverage? A tremendous amount of research goes into the development of pesticide products and the label statements are the proven means to achieve maximum pest control while minimizing adverse impact on human and non-target exposure and environmental impact. At the present time, most pesticide manufacturers do not include instructions for low volume or write-on applicators. In fact, many pesticide labels include minimum carrier volumes and sprayer pressure requirements. What does the research say? At the present time, few research papers report on testing the efficacy of write-on applicators in landscape management. More is known about the use of low-volume applicators, but most studies are not specifically focused on turf grass management. The findings from this limited number of studies suggest the following. Disease control appears to be very product or pest specific. Researchers at North Carolina State University compared various application methods, write-on spreader sprayer, spray wand, and research backpack, on brown patch management in tall fescue and found no differences in control. The authors stated that as long as a highly efficacious fungicide is used, the application method was not a factor. Conversely, Benelli and Horvath determined that the use of low spray volumes with or without adjuvant additives, resulted in reduced penetration of the spray solution and decreased fungicidal control of large patch in zoysia grass. In the Deep South, confusion exists with the naming of diseases caused by Rhizoctonia solani. For many years, the term brown patch was commonly used for diseases on both cool and warm season turf grasses. However, the term large patch is now the accepted name for Rhizoctonia solana diseases affecting St. Augustine grass, zoysia grass, Bermuda grass, and centipede grass. Brown patch is primarily a leaf disease, whereas large patch rarely produces leaf spots and generally produces rotted sheaths near the soil surface. Delivery of efficacious fungicides at lower carrier volumes, i.e. via write-on applicators, can be effective on foliar diseases such as brown patch. However, fungicides that must be applied on the sheath or stem near the soil surface, like large patch, require greater carrier volumes to deliver the fungicide into the turf canopy. No published research exists reporting on the use of write-on applicators for dollar spot, a foliar disease, or take-all root rot, a soil-borne disease, two common turf diseases in the Deep South. Pre- and post-emergence weed control. 
researchers at Purdue University tested the performance of 11 post-emergence broadleaf herbicides applied through Boom at 10 or 20 gallons per acre and Boomless at 10.9 gallons per acre right on applicators and compared it to a traditional Lesco Chemlon spray gun at 87 gallons per acre and a handheld research grade Boom sprayer 87 gallons per acre on dandelion and white clover. They reported no differences in dandelion or white clover control with various post-emergence herbicides as influenced by application equipment. Additionally, despite a low carrier volume and coarse droplet size, weeds were equally controlled by herbicides with low volume equipment. Similarly, a graduate student thesis research project at the University of Nebraska compared ultra-low volume sprayer applications, 2 gallons per acre, to a conventional application of 60 gallons per acre of Trimet Classic, Tenacity, and Pendulum Aquacap targeting dandelion, ground ivy, and crabgrass. Across four studies, sprayer type did not produce a statistical difference. A demonstration was conducted in conjunction with the University of Tennessee Turfgrass Field Day showing that prodiamine applied at either 11 or 80 GPA was equally effective at preventing crabgrass germination. Landscapes in the Deep South often have a tremendous number of different weed species, many of which are very difficult to control. Additionally, centipede grass and St. Augustine grass are particularly susceptible to herbicide injury. Oftentimes, successful control comes via a combination of an effective herbicide applied at a specified rate, carrier volume, and sequential treatments along with prescribed adjuvants. Each of these possible scenarios may or may not produce the desired results when delivered through a low-volume applicator. Application of Liquid Nutritionals The only reported research on application of liquid nutritionals through a low-volume applicator is the previously mentioned thesis from the University of Nebraska. The student applied two industry-leading liquid fertilizers at 5 and 60 GPA to creeping bentgrass golf course fairways. None of the treatments differed from the untreated control on relative chlorophyll content, normalized difference vegetation index, and tissue dry weight. Researchers at the University of Florida conducted a large-scale demonstration trial on anemic centipede grass looking at four liquid fertilizer products, macro and micronutrients, each applied at a high and low label rate, and with or without an adjuvant. One week after application, only one product showed subtle differences when observed using drone imagery. At ground level, no observable differences could be detected. Insect control through low-volume applicators. At the time of writing this article, no published data exists that reports on control of the southern chinch bug, white grubs, webworms, or armyworms, the most troublesome insects found in landscapes in the Deep South. The use of write on applicators will continue to rise given the stated reasons. At the 2019 Deep South Turf Expo, lawn care operators reported having good success with write on applicators, and some expressed concerns that are in line with the pros and cons stated herein. Additionally, chemical companies are starting to look at their products applied through low-volume applicators, which will greatly benefit our understanding on how to most effectively use this technology in the landscape industry in the Deep South. For all resources associated with this article, check out our show notes. And don't miss an episode. Subscribe at Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can also visit us at theturfzone.com. You've been listening to The Turf Zone. For more episodes of The Turf Zone, visit theturfzone.com and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast app.